After a decade of development, the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket has been launched for the first time. This powerful rocket is capable of taking any mission to space. This rocket has finally taken off, carrying not just a lunar lander but also the future of the company. This powerful rocket has been configured to take any mission to space, from low Earth orbit to Pluto and beyond. See how ULA rocket is set to revolutionize space exploration. Watch the video to learn more about the future of ULA rocket. So space lovers this one's for you let's find out everything. In today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St After a decade-long development phase, the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket has finally reached the launch pad for its inaugural flight, carrying not just a lunar lander, but also the company's future. ULA unveiled its first Vulcan rocket at Space Launch Complex 41 Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on January 5 in preparation for its scheduled launch at 2.18 a.m. Eastern on January 8. The rocket's primary payload is Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander. Following the rollout, ULA executives confirmed the absence of any technical issues with the rocket prior to its launch. The scheduled launch on January 8 offers a 45-minute window with weather forecasts indicating an 85% chance of favorable conditions. Subsequent launch opportunities between the 9th and the 11th present narrower windows, each lasting less than 10 minutes, with less promising weather conditions expected. This mission, named CRP-1 by ULA, marks Vulcan's maiden launch and serves as one of two certification flights mandated for ULA to secure approval from the U.S. Space Force for national security. Payloads. Mark Pellier, ULA's Vice President of Vulcan Development, highlighted, this certification flight stands as the conclusive step in Vulcan Centaur's development. The Centaur upper stage of the rocket is set to execute two burns before releasing Peregrine into a highly elliptical orbit, approximately 50 minutes after liftoff. Following this, ULA plans to conduct additional Centaur tests, including a third burn of its RL-10 engines, spanning over the subsequent 3.5 hours. Gary Wenz, ULA's Vice President of Government and Commercial Programs, highlighted, will leverage this flight test to validate numerous objectives for our upcoming missions. This entails simulating long-duration missions akin to those necessary for launches delivering payloads directly to geostationary orbit. This demonstration will gather thermal data, enabling us to refine our models for extended-duration coast phases. If the CRP-1 mission proves successful, ULA anticipates readiness for the subsequent certification launch served to as early as April. However, the schedule hinges on the preparedness of its payload, search Dream Chaser space plane, and the International Space Station's ability to accommodate the vehicle's arrival. Pelayer mentioned that the two B-4 engines designated for the second launch are fully assembled and presently undergoing acceptance testing at a Blue Origin test site in West Texas. And currently, the Booster and Centaur upper stage are undergoing final assembly at ULA's Decatur, Alabama facility. Pelayer noted, all components are aligning to facilitate delivery to the launch site and to adhere to the outline timeline. ULA has outlined six Vulcan launches slated for this year, with four designated for national security missions, contingent upon the preparedness of those payloads. When's mentioned, there might be some adjustments to the schedule but currently as a starting point, there are six Vulcans contractually listed on the manifest. This upcoming launch signifies the culmination of a decade-long development effort for the Vulcan rocket designed to replace ULA's Atlas and Delta launch vehicles. The company holds a backlog of over 70 planned Vulcan launches, predominantly catering to national security missions and a substantial order from Amazon for launching a segment of its Project Kuiper broadband constellation. The shift to Vulcan though delayed compared to the original timelines, holds significant importance for ULA's future trajectory. Pelayer emphasized, Vulcan is pivotal for our company's future. It provides remarkable value and competes favorably in the market. He highlighted Vulcan's adaptability capable of accommodating payloads larger than those handled by Delta IV Heavy, a factor delivering exceptional value to customers across various sectors, which involve commercial, civil, and national security space. While are stressed, Vulcan's design caters to a broad spectrum of missions. However, the inaugural launches of new rockets inherently carry risks. ULA downplayed these risks, citing the heritage derived from Atlas and Delta and most of Vulcan's major components. 
Pellier noted that numerous systems developed for Vulcan were integrated into recent Atlas and Delta launches, asserting many of the systems we're employing here have significant flight experience. We've rigorously qualified these systems through an extensive program. We approach this inaugural launch with a strong sense of assurance, once stated, in the event of any issues we're well prepared to respond swiftly, address the concerns, and quickly return to flight. He echoed Pellier's confidence in the mission, emphasizing the need for its execution. Should any setbacks occur, one's affirmed ULA's commitment to identifying the cause and promptly rectify it to resume flights expeditiously. Thornton, Astrobotics CEO, shared his optimism about the launch, expressing confidence in ULA as reliable partners. He remarked, I think they're going to do very well on this mission. Here's wishing them success. While private space enterprises like ULA navigate the complexities of inaugural rocket launches and SpaceX fine-tunes crucial systems. Following final confirmation of rocket and payload readiness. Two GM63XL solid rocket boosters and twin B4 engines produce more than 1.7 million pounds of thrust to lift ULA's Vulcan rocket away from Cape Canaveral's Space Launch Complex 41. Shortly after liftoff, the rocket begins a pitch over. To attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure it experiences during flight, Vulcan then reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. With the ability to add two, four, or six solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, Vulcan can be precisely configured to take any mission to space, from low Earth orbit to Pluto and beyond. These boosters augment the rocket's total thrust at liftoff, adding approximately 460,000 pounds of thrust per SRB. With their propellant expired approximately 90 seconds into ascent, the SRBs burn out, followed by jettison. Jettison time is variable, occurring between 100 and 150 seconds after liftoff, depending on mission requirements. Vulcan's guidance system then activates to steer towards the precise target in space. First stage flight continues as the rocket crosses the Kármán line, entering space. With the majority of propellant expended as Vulcan fights against the force of gravity, the B-4 engines shut down, and the booster stage separates with the rocket now weighing less than 10% of what it did at liftoff. Dual RL-10C engines on ULA Centaur upper stage ignite. Spacecraft are encapsulated inside a 5.4-meter diameter payload fairing, which provides a protective environment during ascent. Following Centaur engine ignition, the payload fairing is jettisoned. With the first burn complete, the Centaur engine shuts down for a coast phase. Centaur flies a short, medium, or long coast which is determined by launch day. Further into flight, Centaur ignites for a second burn, powering the vehicle into a translunar injection orbit. Following the second main engine cutoff, ULA Centaur places Astrobatic's Peregrine Lunar Lander into a highly elliptical orbit, more than 220,000 miles above Earth, where it will intercept the Moon. Following delivery of the Peregrine spacecraft, Centaur comes alive for a third and final burn to reach a heliocentric orbit around the Sun. Centaur completes the CRP-1 mission by carrying Celestis Memorial Spaceflight Pace load into deep space. Known as the Enterprise Flight, this mission includes 234 flight capsules, containing cremated remains, DNA samples, and messages of greetings from clients worldwide on an endless journey in interplanetary space beyond the Earth-Moon system to orbit the Sun forever. NASA is preparing for a commercially built craft to land on the Moon's surface for the first time. It is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, which works with private engineering firms. The company, United Launch Alliance, built what's dubbed as the Vulcan Center rocket for the launch. That rocket will carry a lunar lander craft built by another company, Astrobotic. Liftoff is scheduled for Monday, and a moon landing attempt is slated for February 23rd. According to Derek Pitts, he is a chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, and always so good to answer all of our questions about space good to have you with us. NASA's goal, outsourcing missions to private companies. How does this advance space this really does a great job for NASA because in outsourcing a lot of the work that they have to do, it makes it easier for NASA to meet the deadlines and the schedule for actually getting to the moon. And it also takes advantage of all the technological capability that there is spread around the country to get this work done. 
NASA has always been a big contract, a big contractor, really, letting out contracts to other engineering firms to build the rockets and things like this. So, this is not unusual for NASA, but they're spreading it out a lot more these days tend to help meet the schedule. Well, the rocket is also carrying some DNA of the late Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry and some of the original cast members. Derek, this is a really interesting mission because what's essentially being done is the United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket is sending this package that's called Pargram that actually has 21 different packages on it, payloads on it. And one of them is a package that has the remains of a number of people to be deposited in space to be deposited on the moon. So, this is a launch service that has been available for at least a decade, maybe more than a decade, where you can actually send the remains of your loved ones to space. And so, here we get a chance to see these most famous space-related people finally heading to space. Well, they've said that everything is marching forward well. There have been a series of checks and tests over the last several days and mission managers are happy with what they've seen so far. So now the process pushes on as ULA readies Vulcan for launching the pre-dawn hours of Monday. Vulcan is set to lift off from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It was rolled out to launch pad 4041 this morning for the Certification 1 mission. The countdown and fueling will begin Sunday afternoon at 3. There are important payloads too on this test flight. The first commercial mission to soft land on the moon. NASA's part of that was some critical science instruments that will pave the way for the Artemis program's aim for a lunar base. But the majority of the focus come lunchtime. The performance of this new rocket critical to ULA and the commercial space flight industry as a whole. But Vulcan is ULA's effort to get back into the game with a more price competitive rocket with US engines that can fly frequently. And so yeah, they're going to go out and try to challenge SpaceX and the Falcon family of rockets. And a big part of that challenge taking on SpaceX is yes for this. Flight, test flight to successfully execute on Sunday but also for ULA to step up their pace and their cadence of launches in the next few years. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.